Okay, so in this video, we're going to go ahead and create this CSS comment list. Uh, basically, this is just going to be some markup with an image and a couple of pieces of text. And we're going to style this to make it look like a user with an image is posting a comment. And this can just be used, you know, on the front end of however you're outputting comments on the back end. So this is what the list looks like. We've got one uh, comment here that you can see has been made to look like it's almost like a reply. So you have the option of adding an additional class on if you want to make it look like a reply. But apart from that, all it is is an image and two pieces of text. We're going to look at sort of floating and learn about how the floats, uh, we, you know, we come across problems with floats here and things like that. And just making sure that this works cross browser. So this does work cross browser. The only browser it's not going to be supported on is IE7. Uh, it's just going to look a little bit funny on IE7 and below, but uh, we don't really mind. So uh, let's go ahead and jump straight into the, uh, the code for this. Okay, so we've started out with a basic document uh, layout. We've just got a head body, we're linking in the style sheet here, a uh, title, things like that. So let's just take a look at the directory structure very quickly. We've got index.html, which we're working on at the moment. This is just for example purposes, but um, obviously if you have a website that you want to integrate this into, you would just write the markup wherever you needed this comment list to display. We've got a CSS folder, which just basically contains our global.css file, which we also have open. And we've got an image folder as well, which just contains an example avatar now in this case um, you would probably dynamically pull uh, avatars locations from your database and then uh, hit your server to pull in the image but in this case we're just using this image as an example okay so what we're going to do first is write the markup and then we'll take a look at how we style the markup to look exactly how we want so we'll write everything we need and then we'll look at it without styling and see how that see how that looks so the first thing we need is a container to wrap all of our comments in and this is just going to be a div with a class of comments. So within this we're going to have many different comments and comment replies. So they're just going to be obviously divs but we're going to have a class of comment. So in here is going to be the image, the, the text and things like that. But we'll have multiple instances of these comments. So let's go ahead and just focus on one for now. Uh, so what do we need? Well, we need a few elements. The first one's the image, and that's just going to be a container with an image inside of it. So let's go ahead and do that now and preview it in the browser. So we create another div element, and this is going to be comment image. Now you've noticed I'm prefixing pretty much everything with comment. This just keeps everything modular and says to us, well, this style is associated with the comments on my site. So it just keeps everything, you know, wrapped together. And um, we'll be doing this for every element that we create within our comments, uh, sort of overall element, if you like. So within this comment image uh, element, we're going to go ahead and just literally create a comment and we'll give this a source and an alt and I'm going to say Alex's avatar and for uh, the image source we know that we've got an image within this img directory so img forward slash avatar dot jpeg okay so looking at this in the browser then it just looks like an image so it's not very useful at the moment um, we want to make this small and round and at the moment it's very big and square so let's focus on the actual body of the comment. We're going to wrap everything here in a container called comment body. And the reason we're going to do this is because we're going to float these elements. So we're going to float this one left and this one left. So they sit next to each other as we saw in the uh, preview at the start of the video. So the first thing is the little comment at the top saying Alex said two minutes ago or someone said X minutes ago. And then underneath that we want the paragraph where the comment sits. So for the class at the top we'll call this comment info and remember I said I'm prefixing everything with comment so that doesn't uh, you know this isn't an exce exception so I'm going to say Alex said two minutes ago and then a colon so under here we're not going to create another div but we're going to keep things semantic and say that this is a paragraph of text so uh, let's take a look at what this looks like at the moment 
Well, it just looks like an image as it did before with this text just underneath it. Pretty boring and straightforward, but it's good to see how the markup looks before we actually go ahead and style it. So we need to go ahead and just generate some uh, text. So I've come over to Cupcake Ipsum. I'm going to go ahead and just copy this text. It can be any, any text you like, really. And uh, let's go ahead and just paste that within that paragraph. So when I refresh now, you can see that we've just got text under here. So this all looks very boring. What we now need to go do is go ahead and style this. So let's head over to our global.css style sheet, which remember is already linked in. We're going to go ahead and just change the overall font of the page first of all, because it's uh, as default on my browser and operating system Times New Roman. So the body, we're just going to go ahead and set the uh, font to, I don't know, 1M or something like that. And we'll go ahead and choose a more readable font. So Trebuchet MS and we'll put the fullback as a sans serif. And let's refresh. And there we go. That already looks a little bit nicer. So now what we'll go ahead and do is look at styling the actual comments container. Now, we don't really need to apply this style, but I'm going to go ahead and use a class selector, select comments, and I'm going to go ahead and set the width to 100%. Now, the reason I've done this is just to remind us that the overall container, if we inspect this, is 100%. It by default is, it's a block level element, so it will span the entire width of its parent container. In this case, the parent container is body. And basically the reason it's 100% is as I resize this, I want this to still look nice. So we're going to end up floating this text up here with this obviously a lot smaller. But when I come in, I want everything to come in nicely. So basically just to remind us that this is going to be responsive, I want the comments container to be a width of 100%. And of course, you could change this depending on your needs. It could be 70% or 50% or whatever. So let's go ahead and just give a little bit of padding to each of the comments and so we basically using just comment and let's go ahead and set a padding here so we've got north east south and west values what we're going to do is we're going to set 10 pixels to each of these except the south so the bottom is not going to have 10 pixels now the reason for this is if we go ahead and refresh and just look at the padding here uh, the green that you can see around the outside of that is represents the padding orange in chrome represents the margins but we've not put this on the bottom because if we think about it at the top of each comment is 10 pixels so as we duplicate these comments down we're always then going to have a 10 pixel space between them so if we just go ahead and duplicate this quickly to explain this we go ahead and refresh you can now see that between each comment is that green space there. So the green space at the top will nicely space out each of the comments. So we'll go ahead and get rid of that comment just for now. Okay, so the next thing we want to do is go ahead and look at floating these elements. Uh, in fact, we'll go ahead and look at reducing the size of this first before we do that. Uh, at the moment, this is looking a little bit too large. So we'll go ahead and focus on the element that represents the image. So we're going to go ahead and say comment image and then we're going to target the image within that and we'll go ahead and set this to a width of say 65 pixels so now that we've done that we can refresh and we can see it's starting to look a little bit more sensible now what we want to do though is uh, in fact let's just reduce that to 50 pixels we're going to go ahead and apply a border radius to this uh, and let's go ahead and take a look what the border radius property does if you're not familiar with it if we set a border radius radius of 10 pixels you can see this just rounds off the corners uh, with a radius of 10 pixels what we want to do is we want to match this with the width that we've given the element in this case 50 pixels and what that will do is it will round the borders off so much that it'll end up looking like a circle so this property is supported in all of the you know popular browsers, i.e. I think 8 and below won't support it, so it might, maybe 9. But um, you'll find that uh, you know by, as a sort of fallback, this will just go square, which isn't a bad thing at all. So what we want to do now is actually go ahead and look at structuring this properly. So we want to float this text here, or this element, this comment body element, up to this so it's sitting next to it basically uh, now how do we do this well let's go ahead and uh, just set the comments background to a light gray and this is going to let us see what happens when we start to float so you can see that we've got this uh, sort of full background here everything looks fine 
Now what happens when we go ahead and start to flow elements? Well, let's go ahead and just add a selector for comment image up here, and we'll go ahead and float this left. Um, so that Uh, actually, what we want to do, I suppose we can give this a width. So let's go ahead and give this a width of, I don't know, 65 pixels. So if we take a look at the common image element, you can see that the blue area represents how wide this image is. And you can see because it's a div uh, element, which is a block level element, it spans the entire width of its parent container. Um, but when we go ahead and refresh after that change, you can see that now we've got a smaller blue container. So our aim now is to go ahead and float both of these elements left so they sit next to each other. So let's go ahead and do that. Uh, we'll go ahead and create a multiple selector. So we'll say comment image and comment body. And we'll go ahead and float both of these left. So it's just comma separating our selectors. So now what's going to hap what's, what's happened is nothing too interesting. It still looks bad and it looks even worse now because it looks like the container has collapsed on us. So we'll go ahead and look at why this hasn't floated up here yeah, and then we'll go ahead and look at why the container's collapsed. So the, the reason for this is the comment body is still at 100% width technically. Um, so what we need to do go and do is give this a width itself. So uh, if we come down here and say comment body width of, I don't know, 80%. Now, you'll notice we're mixing percentages and uh, pixels for this. And the reason for that is when we pull the page inwards, we want the image to remain the same size. So we don't want the image to change size. So when we refresh here, we can see it's already starting to look like what we saw at the start of the video. And it's still looking sort of bad, though, because of this container. Let's go ahead and just pull this in and I'll show you what I meant. Uh, as you come in here, you can see that this 80% element is uh, sort of coming in, it's going along with it, and when we come in here, it pulls down. But this is remaining the same size, and that's what we want here. You could, of course, have this um, image within it at a percentage level, but you know you can you can play around with this and achieve the effect you need. But that's why we mix two different uh, types, pixels and percentages. So now what we need to do is go ahead and address this container collapsing problem. The reason that this has happened is because we've got a container here, so we've got a comment here. Uh, if we go ahead and just duplicate this comment again, you'll see that we get more than one problem. And that, that is that we've got this now hanging around up here. So we're in a bit of a mess here. But if you take a look at each of the comments, you'll see that we've got two small green elements just up here. Now, when I float an element left, inside of here and I float another element left, both elements are floated left, these two here, and this causes the, uh, the container co to collapse because we've not uh, cleared the floats. So we're going to use a little, little bit of a hack on our comment to create a pseudo element. And this is an element that doesn't technically exist on your page, but we're using CSS to create this pseudo element. And what we want to do is we want to go ahead and give this an empty contents. So we're just providing the content property and a space. We want to display this as a table. Yep, looks hacky. And then we want to clear both. Now clear can have clear left or clear right or clear both. So we're gonna clear both. And what that will do is completely fix everything. And the reason this works is uh, if we take a look within our comment element and this after, you can see that where the little uh, yellow speech bubble is on the page, that's where that element is sitting. And what that means is it means that we don't have to create another element after each comment and specifically clear floats that way. We've done it in uh, a sort of hacky, but way where we don't need to provide lots of different mark uh, lots more markup to our page because it things will start to get messy so that's how we clear both of them it's starting to look a little bit nicer so now let's go ahead and just get rid of the background on that and we'll now go ahead and focus on some of the other things so we want to make this bold we also want to reduce the padding or the margin between uh, the two elements here so let's go ahead and do that first if we scroll down and scroll to comment body P. So we're targeting the P element or the paragraph element within the comment body. And we we'll want to go ahead and set the margin on the top because at the moment I think it's set to about 20 pixels. We want to go ahead and change this to 10. So when we refresh, 
that just pulls up a little bit. So it just packs everything a little bit neatly, a little bit more neatly into each other. So now what we want to do is go ahead and set the comment info, which is remember the element that contains the Alex said two minutes ago. And we want to go ahead and set the weight of this font to bold. There we are. So when we refresh, we now got bold text. You can do whatever you like with this. So that's all done. Uh, it looks nice in terms of how responsive it is. It pulls down here. Uh, you could probably hide these on mobile if you wanted or something like that. I will not load them in at all. But yeah, basically uh, it's looking you know as good as we can get it at the moment. So now let's go ahead and just quickly focus on the reply. So if I wanted this comment here, for example, to be a, a reply, I'm going to add a new class to this. So when I do that, nothing happens, but we'll go ahead and target this comment reply. And again, with a comment hyphen prefix, we'll target this specifically to increase the margin on the left hand side. So let's go ahead and over here to our CSS, let's go ahead up to comment and just below that we'll say comment reply and we'll say margin left. Now, should we use a percentage or should we use a fixed width here? If we use a fixed width, so for example, 50 pixels, uh, on the desktop that looks good. We've just basically increased the um, margin on the left hand side. Nothing, uh, you know, hard or clever about this but when we go ahead and reduce down to a smaller viewport you can see that this is sticking out almost too much uh, sort of unnecessarily so we can remedy this by using a percentage so if we go over back out over to our code and instead of 550 pixels we use five percent what this will do is it will reduce that inwards however when we come out that will increase nicely along with it and then when we're in say a you know a full view it looks okay. So you can obviously play around with these values based on you know how you want your comment system to look. But basically what we've done here is we've built a front end comment system with an image. We've looked at floating elements, you know, tidying things up. And we've also looked at this comment reply hook or class that we can just pop onto any of the elements to increase the margin on the left. So that's how we create a comment list with CSS.